Right, so we're going to talk about installing the cold water storage system in your attic, okay? We're going to cover cold water in the next couple of days anyway, so we need to show you how to install the, 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 the tank. Um, and the tanks that we have inside is already drilled, okay? So um, what we're going to, I'm going to show you how to drill them and stuff like that, and then you're going to just make in a, a connection. Uh, everyone will do two connections, and then that'll be the same as the other what I've done here, then you will be able to be part of the test of the tank, just keep on doing the tanks in there. And then it's like this Swiss cheese tank here with holes everywhere, all right? And so what we do is, to feed your tank, you're going to have mains water coming in, okay? The mains water comes in through the ball valve like this, all right? And that will be connected to the top section of your tank, to a 19 mil hole, which is here, okay, or at, at this end. You, you always put the, the, the connection at the far end from where you're taking off your draw points, okay? So if you have your mains connection over this side, then all your connections should be down here, okay, down this end. But if all your connections are up that end, then you should have it down this end. That's to promote the good flow of water and to make sure that nothing gets stagnant, okay? Likewise, imagine you, have, uh, you haven't got enough space in an attic for a tank like this, especially in the likes of uh, uh, attic conversions, where they have they have the cox tanks, which are, which, which are much shallower. All right, and the tank can be used at all costs, but sometimes you have to soak those right into the eaves, and then um, they have smaller tanks. So if they have two small tanks, what, what they'll do is they'll connect the mains into one, okay? Take a connection off here that goes into the other tank, and then all your connection to feed the rest of the house comes off the, this tank. And that means, and it should come off the far end of that tank, because that means you get a good flow of water going through all the way through, and no water goes <coughs> stagnant in the others. Okay? When you get stagnant water, you get growth bacteria and all that. And so, like, you'll, you'll notice, you'll know what the water smells. Yeah, it smells like, like the tunnel. So, um, from the mains, the mains comes into the house and it goes to, in most conditions, it goes to two places. One, in a, it, this is a, the indirect system. It comes in and it goes to one to the kitchen sink, right after it hits the stopcock where you can turn off the water in the house. It goes to the stopcock under the sink in most cases. Then it has a tee off for the cold tap in the kitchen sink and then it has a connection in the cold water storage system. Okay? Any other water in the house has come from the water storage system. So you probably should avoid drinking it on the air bed. Yeah. Everyone brushes their teeth from the toilets upstairs and stuff like that, including me, but when you go through um, things that might push it off we go through what what you find in those tanks at different times and uh, we go through and then you just make the decision for yourselves. So um, what we what we've got to do is first you put on your your, your main spout, okay? So you will drill a hole 15 or 18 to 19 mils, whatever, from the top, and you put in your, your main connection, all right? We have this here, so this support plate, okay? What that does is it gives the, 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 um, the connection a bit of strength. So if the water pressure is very high coming in, the ball valve will do that, and it actually takes the shape out of the tank. You can see that it, the shape moves on the tank there like that, okay? If there was just a nut on the back of that. But if I put this plate on, okay, over this side, down this one, if I put it on over that side, this is a few holes. If I put it on there and do this, okay, that then gives it the support when I turn when I put on that nut. That gives it the support and it stops it from moving. You'll find them plates when you buy the cold water storage system, they're generally sellotape to the inside of the system. Okay, generally they are. And then you'll put your connection onto that. That takes a nut and ring on there. Okay. So that's that one. Uh, next thing that we that you need to do is you then have a connection. Have to take your connections off. All right. So you've got um, for for what you use them inside. You'll have two connections. One actually possibly three, depending on if it's a shower. If there's a shower needed on it as well, or whatever. If there's a shower fed, the shower is fed by a half inch, and if it's um, 
then you're feeding your hot water storage system and your, your cold water distribution pipe around the house, they're going to be in three quarter. Okay. So what we do, um, we've got to drill those. So what I use is a step bit like this. Okay. Now you, people, some people use hole saws. All right. And you've got to make sure that if that's the piece that's going in, okay, and there's the rubber washer that's with it, that we only drill the same diameter as the outside of those threads because that's what's going to slot through the holes. Uh, you see that there? Okay. I'll show you over here. See like that there? That's what's going to slot through the hole. The, the rubber washer doesn't go through, it actually surrounds it. You, you can see it on this side here. If I do that, I'll put the tube from here. All right. See, so the rubber washer surrounds it there, okay? Some people don't have washers and they try and use PTFD to make up the washer with that. But you shouldn't use PTFD on plastic, okay? The oil in it and the plastic uh, work against each other and eventually uh, you'll get leaks there as well. Um, so, <coughs> what, what, what you, I'll show you how to do this, I suppose. So, if you measure the outside diameter of the of the um, of the that's a three fifty connection, right? Um, and then you'll drill the holes. So I'm going to do this to twenty four mil, twenty six mil, okay? And I can see the, the different sizes on that there. I have more of these here for you, but you want me to use them for this, all right? Uh, I have to find a hole now of space where I can drill a hole. Okay, I know our connection is up this end and we shouldn't take any connections off it, but as I said, this is like Swiss cheese down here, so I'm going to do one down at this end. Right, you'll also notice that all of those connections are taken from the bottom of the tank, quite close to the bottom of the tank, but not at the bottom of the tank, all right? And they're certainly not coming directly out of the bottom of the tank. Anybody, any idea why that is? Exactly, you get all silt built up and stuff in it, okay? And if the silt builds up in there, and you put the connection coming out the bottom of the pipe, all that dirt is going to go down the pipe and now it's going to block all your fittings and you know your appliances like your taps and your um, showers and whatever else that might be coming there. Okay, all the filters everywhere will just get blocked and you'll have no water flowing through. Um, so we'll drill it down this end. What we want to do is you want to come up around 50 mil from the bottom, okay? 50 mil up and then drill it. Okay, not, not lower than that. You should also take your cold water off at 50. You should come up 10, 15 mil for your hot. Any idea why you should go with your hot higher than your cold? Temperature. It's got to do with the temperature, all right? It rises, is it? Some weight? No. Okay, so if this was full with water, right? And you only have, you have one connection at this height and you have one connection at this height. Which one, if that if the water stops filling into this, which one is going to run out first? The top. The top one. Okay, so the hot. So that means if you're in the shower, if you had, <coughs> if you had it the opposite way around, you have the hot here and the cold up here. The water's going to drain down. You run out cold. Now you've only got hot water coming down in because it goes down into the cylinder um, and goes back out to your shower. And you've only got hot water coming out of it, and you can re scald it. All right. But if it runs out of the hot forest, you're not going to get scalded. All right. So you should always just step them a tiny bit. You know, 10, 15 mil. That's all you need to do. Okay. So you should come up about 15. Come up, measure up 50 mil. Okay. Put put a small little mark on where you're gonna where where you're gonna drill, and then you drill your hole. Okay. If you're if you're too close as well, because the, because the tank is curved, you're not gonna get a you're not going to make, be able to make the connection on all right i'm just going to do it on this side if you just want to come down this way you to see better okay and as we drill i'm going to test it every time right? so i get the connection Still, that's just barely there now, okay? So one more, one more slot, one more step, okay? And that should be true. That 
that's good and tight, that should just make it through that. If I screw it through, it should come through, okay? So, I may even go to the next one just to... It's only one mil, you know? There we go, perfect. Okay, so I've gone all the way through with that. You've got two different types of 350s, different different ways of making them in, okay? And let's see what I mean. Yes. Okay. See the bottom of those? Completely different. Okay? Completely different. So although it's the same fitting and you just put the nut on that side, it gives you a way of holding them quite different there. Alright? So two separate tools. These are these are called uh, tank connector tools and they're made by Monument okay uh, I, don't, I haven't seen anybody in Ireland other than uh, one person with these tools all right and what you do is you place you take off the t-bar you slot it through here and it grabs those two little nibs okay and it grabs those two little nibs and you have your nut. so I push it through the hole like that, okay. Tighten my nut. Note where my washer is. Where's the washer? Inside. 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 Why is that? That's where the water. Is. That's where the water. So it's always water side. Washers always got water side. You can use two washers on this if you like. One washer should do it. Should do it. Uh, it shouldn't do any more than that. Okay. So with the two nibs being held in there now, okay. I can put that on. If you can't see, you might want to come around this way. Okay. I'm able to hold against myself, right, and do that. Okay. Just want to have a look in there and see see the way that's being held inside there, lads. stops it from turning okay that's gonna stop it from turning and um, if I don't if I don't hold against it the whole thing will turn when I do that all right you're also gonna to have to hold against yourself when you're tightening on now you're gonna tighten on uh, a, a, a copper nib onto that as well all right um, small piece of copper like that there okay and you're gonna tighten that nut onto it so you'll need to hold against yourself in there as well, yeah? Whatever way is possible. If that's a nice short piece of copper, right, then this will stick out past it, yeah? So if you had a that, that length there, this would stick out past it, and you can hold it in the same way again. But if this is too long, like that one is, right, then I'd need to hold it from the inside, yeah? Which is very, which is very tough to do, right, as I tighten on that one. It's much easier to do it if you pull the pull the bar through the pipe as opposed to tightening it on that way. Okay? Once that's tight, that should hold then. The rubber washer is compressed and it's good and tight and you've got your boss white or whatever or uni white on the on the nut and then you've got a cap on it. Okay. So you've got a second type then as I said. Yes. And the second type. I use this, right? It's like a stepped radiator key. Have you seen them? Okay, well you see the two slots down the side of it? <coughs> okay, the two slots down the side of it is perfect for that goes in there and it holds against them. All right, so when that goes into the into the, one of the slots, like that there, I can tighten that nut up. Again, when you're tightening up your nut on this side, on press on a bit of copper for the, because for the, um, you're going to go on to a valve then after that. 
be sure a lot of people don't put valves on up in the in, in the attic. I would always put a valve on in the attic <coughs> because anybody any idea why I would do that? So you can stop the water. Absolutely, because straight away, like uh, what I'm always thinking is, if I'm going <coughs> to a job, I'm thinking if there's an issue, I'm the one that's going to be called back because uh, of course maybe it's something that I caused. But if it's if it's not something I caused and, I, and there's something else that the customer wants done, what why should I? Put valves everywhere and make sure that I can isolate all different sections. Yeah, yeah, because it's future proofing, right? It means when you come back, bang, you can just, you know, I always put valves up there. We can turn off that valve. Now we can go down to the hot press and work from the hot press. Imagine you have to change the valve in the hot press, okay? Instead of draining out the tank, waiting around for that, you just come up, bang, turn off that valve. Now you should be able to break the valve in the hot press. There you go. Open the tap, let it drain down. Then you should be able to break the valve in the hot press. Change that very quickly. You know, um, so future proof everything. That's the way I look at things when I'm, when I'm doing any sort of plumbing. Uh, take it that you're, you're trying to make it as easy as possible for you on the next time you, you, you go to it. All right. So we have um, our our feed, our mains feed to our ball valve, right? The mains feed to the ball valve is half inch. Okay. That means what happens if the water keeps on flowing into that? Okay, say the ball valve stops working. You need an overflow. There's an overflow. There's an overflow. There's an overflow. There's an overflow. Okay, so instead of the tank filling up and the, that ball valve is not working now, float valve, the water is going to just start pitching over the side. So instead of that, as Lee says, we have the overflow. Okay, so we got an overflow connection which looks like that there. Okay, this takes a piece of uh, uh, three quarter wagon pipe, right? Just glued in and off it goes. It's left to outside, right? It should never be piped into a, a gutter or a drain or anything like that, okay? It, sometimes they call them a hazard pipe, okay? And it, so you put it somewhere that is visible. So if you're like sitting, or if you're standing at your kitchen sink or something like that, there's water pouring down above the, over the window, right? Why would that be? You know, you know them, it's overflowing. So it tells you, because these are buried up in an attic somewhere, you never find them. Okay, so if it's buried up in an attic somewhere and you can't find it, uh, you, you never see it. You don't know if there's a problem until it starts coming out over the top, right? So another safety precaution that they make with these is, first of all, if, that's, if, the, if the flow valve, of the fill valve, is the same height as the overflow, that's a bit silly, isn't it? Okay, just two reasons why. You don't want that because this is never really sealed properly, okay? No one really uses washers on this. Okay, um, so if that if the water got up to that level, it would come out here as well. Okay. Um, the second reason is to prevent if that water is contaminated in there. So imagine there's a some sort of animal has got into that water there. Okay. Um, if the water gets up to the same level as this here, that's open. Okay. On that side, it's open. Once the flow valve is down, and the water can go back through this mains pipe it can be pulled back through if there's some sort of a negative pull on it okay so then that water that's in there goes back into the mains and it can go to any house on the street just there's no there's no non-return valve okay so they want to prevent back siphonage that's called back siphonage so they want to prevent that so the re the, the whole idea of a ball flow valve is to prevent back siphonage the water does never re rises to that level because the ball flow will stop the water before it gets to that Okay, um, it stops it a little bit below it. Sometimes people like to bend the arm of the ball valve down to keep the water below it, but it definitely has to be below the level of the overflow, otherwise the water is just constantly pouring out of that too. Okay, so what they do is they drop the overflow, 40 mil, from the from the uh, the outlet. It drops down 40 mil, okay, and uh, like that there, okay, and that's filled in an awful place as well. And then your rubber washer and nut goes on the other side. Okay, now it's lower, right? So the water should never reach this because it'll flow out this pipe. But if they're the same size, it, it can fit <coughs> because it's, you know, so what they do is they go one size bigger for your overflow. So your overflow has to be one size bigger than your inlet and it needs to be um, 40 mil below the inlet level. Okay, so that's my